Coming up on show 747, China shows us the way to an EV sales recovery. Stick around, I'll tell you more. Plus, the Biden M Byte has gone into production. Always a big day when a new EV goes into production. WM Motor have an all new EX5Z you can get your deposit down on. The car boom in China continues. Car boom in Netherlands, they're loving the EVs. Tesla Gigafactory in Shanghai is rapidly expanding. And that new Model Y wiring loom, yeah, not so fast. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. Here's what happened on Monday, the 13th of April, a bank holiday here. So, yeah, okay, I, I did spend some time working. Oopsie. However, if you've had it off today, I hope you had fun. I go through every EV story, so you don't have to. So let's kick off with Byton then, and Byton's M Byte is distinctive for many reasons, but the biggest one would be that massive screen that runs the entire width of the car from behind the steering wheel all the way through to the passenger. Well, the Byton M Byte production, the all electric and very, very high tech crossover, has officially begun now. As promised, Byton has kept the 48 inch infotainment display. Says Joe at Clean Technica, the Byton M Byte has two powertrains, single motor rear drive, and 270 brake horsepower, 300 miles. That is what they're aiming for. And a four wheel drive version with 400 horsepower knocks a little off the range, but of course, you've got the performance of 265 miles. Yeah, in the photo, there's about 20 of them. They're all white, they're parked up in the factory, and uh, good luck if today really was the first day of production. I couldn't quite decipher whether this is pre-production or the start of series production, but either way, congratulations to the Byton team, one step closer and all that, to getting cars in the hands of customers. Well, a car company in China that makes EVs and have been selling them for a long time, many happy customers at WM Motor, and they've now begun taking early deposits for their all-new EX5Z. Until the end of April, customers need only place a small refundable deposit online. Early reservations holder, early reservation holder also get, and this is interesting in China, you can spec your car with an ultraviolet purifier, uh, no extra cost. It's a, an innovative component of a purification system that removes bacteria and microbes in the cabin. And again, some th the the specs on Chinese EVs, uh, or, or, or rather the customer's importance, whereas I tend to fuss over, well, a lot of people fuss over things like 0 to 60 times, very different in China, actually. They want high-tech cars, and by the look of it, something like a purification system, also very important. WM Motors' living pilot system uh, makes the vehicle's touchless active safety systems uh, work with a full suite of level two advanced driver uh, assistance functions. They do it with, uh, they develop that tech with Bosch, by the way. Uh, they've got cameras and radars around the car uh, so you can see hazards, and then there's adaptive crews and lane keep and autonomous parking and all that kind of stuff. So, congratulations again. Car booming. Back in China, this is what we need to hear. A new wave of EVs rolling out in China. And actually, with lockdowns ended, people are going back and the economy is returning. And this isn't a recession that, we're, that we are in or even heading towards. This is merely a pause button to do what we have to do to get through a short-term situation. Car buyers are now coming back in their droves. Ipsos, which is a very famous uh, research firm, surveyed first-time car buyers in March in China. The survey revealed 41% of new buyers have a preference for EVs. Half of the respondents wanted air conditioning or an HVAC system with a germ filter. What did I just say about what people want in China with antibacterial materials? Says electric. Well, there's the joint venture that Volkswagen have, SAIC Volkswagen uh, in Changsha, uh, which is uh, the uh, factory there. That is now all open again and producing cars. It will be producing VWID cars in time. The joint venture that GM has with Chinese automakers, they've got their new little EV called the Baojun. Uh, that's going to be launched with a uh, no questions asked returns policy for 30 days as well to persuade people to get into EVs and start buying uh, EVs. Again, it's great to see actually China. Obviously, this all started in China. And those are the 
the, the, the early lockdowns that happen. And now that they're through the worst of it, we can look to them to see how their economy is recovering and know that actually there is light at the end of the tunnel, despite sometimes, you know, news channels and those websites, they all get clicks for negative news. But use your filter. It's not, there's some bad stuff, but you know, we're going to get through this together and then life will go on. Well, passenger car sales in the Netherlands did go down in March, but not the case for plug-ins, because even though the whole car market went down, plug-in sales went up, says Inside EVs. Plug-in registrations was up over 5,000 uh, for the month, up 8% year on year. Plug-in share was 17%. 14% of the market was all EVs. Tesla Model 3 led the market with 1,339. And what do you reckon number two was in the Netherlands? It really surprised me. It was the Opel Ampera E. Yeah, otherwise known as the Chevy Bolt. Here, it's the Opel Ampera E. Not for much longer, sadly. Uh, they're still selling a lot of the Ampera E, but significantly discounted, certainly to achieve emissions targets and to shift a bit of stock as well. I'll pop a link to Inside EVs in the show notes if you'd like to read more. Well, I want to talk about Tesla in Shanghai for a second. Tesla's Giga Shanghai went from groundbreaking to car production in 365 days. It was a year to the day to open the factory. It was the middle of March, March 17 or 19 last year, when the first piles went into the ground. And now Model 3s are being produced. The immediate attention has certainly shifted on too, and it's now focused on Tesla's infrastructure uh, in order to build... Uh, not the infrastructure, but in order to build uh, new lines of cars like the Model 3 Long Range Rear Wheel Drive and the Model 3 Performance, making them domestically. And that's what all the news has been about recently. But I want to look at the factory because loads of drone videos are still making their way online. And the latest one that I saw today shows the foundations, massive steel piles going into the ground. They're in. And not only are they in, they're in on a massive scale. There's a huge, large-scale large, large scale expansion going on at Giga Shanghai. If you thought they were done, nowhere near. They've got their two main buildings already, Model 3 and the battery building separately. This massive facility that they built, that you saw pictures of online, is only stage one. In fact, the phase that they're working on Again, I, I haven't measured it, and there's been no official confirmation. It looks twice as big. This is just me looking at a drone video and trying to work out sizes of buildings and heights. It looks twice as big as what they've already got. And it's going to double. If that's true, it would double the production capacity at least with the Model Y going into those new buildings. So by the end of the year, look, it took a year to do the first two, and they've got experience now of building on that land, etc. So... By the end of the year, Model Y will be produced. I'm you know, sticking my flag in the sand here, and that's my prediction. Model Y going in. Now, the Model 3 and the Model Y will share production facilities for some parts in China because this is a blank piece of paper building from the, you know, from the ground up. So they're doing it in a different way to what they did in America. And the time, the timing of all this, I wonder... If, if they're making Model Y by the end of the year in China, I wonder how long it'll be before more Model Ys are made in China than actually in Fremont at the home of Tesla. Uh, talking of Phase 1, by the way, going back to the buildings that are already up, they're also, according to this drone video, extending one of the existing buildings. It looks like they might even be joining the two up with some sort of you know, passage to move things between them. It's fascinating. And it doesn't get talked about very much, but I want to spend 10 minutes on it today because I find it really interesting. Talking of Tesla Model Y, by the way, Sandy Munro continues to take his Model Y apart. He is an automotive analyst that takes cars apart down to every nut and bolt and washer, attaches a price to that and then sells the report to the opposition car makers for hundreds of thousands. Uh, the new wiring loom has been the topic of conversation. I've seen, just like the stat that the 3 and the Y share 75% of the parts, which I just don't believe at all. It keeps getting repeated uh, verbatim as well. Just That just keeps getting... That stat is out there. I 
I still don't believe it because there's so many different bits on the Y. So many people have been retweeting, wow, the Model Y is out and it's got that 100 metre wiring loom that it was going to have because we saw this thing three years ago when it was uh, talked about. I just don't believe it till I see it. Now, Sandy Munro says he is, and I quote, kind of disappointed in the design of the Tesla Model Y wiring loom, according to Tesla Rati. Well, back in July of last year, Tesla had a patent published to improve wiring and power and communications in their cars. Now, Tesla maintained that they would decrease from 1.5 kilometers of wire in the Model 3 from, da- from 1.5 kilometers to 100 meters of cabling in the Model Y. Well, Sadie Munro claims that, claims that he can't see less wiring, only a more organized way of doing it. Uh, the new design is an improvement, but he claims they're not using the new 100 meter system. Look, he also says the wires are just as long as in the Model 3. Look, I would caution on that because he's still poking around. These are the first few videos he's made, and he's poking around in the car. When he takes all of the cabling out of the Model Y and measures it for length and weight. Well, then you can make that statement. But until you've done that, you can't... He said, oh, the wires in the Y are just as long as the three. You don't know that. So if you watch that video, again, caution, he doesn't know that because he hasn't measured all of the wires. Just me being uber cautious on listening to what someone says and not believing everything that I hear. Um, However... Have a look at the video. Very interesting. Uh, when he does finally take all the wire, wires out, I'll be interested to see uh, how the wire is different to the three. Let's talk about that in-car camera, which faces into the cabin in the three and the Y. Elon Musk has confirmed that camera is indeed there to support the robo-taxi plans that he has. Since you won't be in the car yourself when your car heads off and starts picking up rides, the camera will provide video evidence if passengers, I don't know, trash the interior, says Engadget. The company recently applied for a patent uh, on using the camera to recognise occupants and apply settings like seat position and climate according to what the person in the driver's seat looks like. For now, though, the in-cabin camera is more of a symbol of their lofty but as yet unfulfilled dreams of full self-driving cars taking themselves off to earn money while you rest your sleepy head in bed. And finally, on the podcast today, when is bigger not necessarily better? When you go to the very top end of the luxury car market, Bentley, the Bentley Bentayga Hybrid, is actually worse than the combustion version. Uh, The combustion version is the V8, and official EPA fuel economy ratings have now come out for the new Bentley. It's a hub, it's a hybrid, it's a plug-in hybrid as well. The plug-in performs worse on the highway than the V8 powered version. EPA rates it as 18 miles. I know. 18 miles all electric. Uh, the rated efficiency on the highway is 21 miles per gallon. The version without the plug socket, the 4-litre twin-turbo V8, does 23 miles to the gallon. And it's a good example, actually, of things being fit for purpose and actually adding a big battery and adding more weight to a big luxury car like the Bentley didn't actually make it any more efficient. And because it's so big and heavy already, you're only going to get 18 miles of all-electric range. That's EPA. Hmm. That, to me, seems like, I don't know, just like a less optimal way of using technology. If you put a plug socket and a battery on it, and on the highway, it's less efficient because you're carrying around more weight as well, because the battery power's run out, because it only goes 18 miles, well, that's less good. Hey, I'd still like one on my driveway, though. Let's do question of the week this week. How can the EV industry help everybody get into electric cars when this coronavirus is all over, when the lockdown ends and hopefully soon when the stay at home orders end and the world gets back to normal. how What can the EV industry do to help people get back or even get into EVs for the first time and help them out get driving electric? I'd love to know. Email me hello at evnewsdaily.com or you can leave a comment in the YouTube show. 
There are 230 patrons of the show. Thank you so much on Patreon uh, for supporting this program. If you want to check it out, Patreon is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash EV News Daily. Uh, 746 previous shows live in the archive. The blog is um, <clears throat> working again. I broke it over the weekend. I don't know what I did. Something to do with caching. And I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm self-taught. Anyway, it broke. Spent far too long watching YouTube videos of how to fix WordPress blogs. And now, a glorious return of EV News Daily. Hopefully, if you check it in now. Is it working? Oh, God, I hope so. If you can leave a little review on Apple Podcasts, it helps grow the show as well. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>